joining me right now is Matthew Semper. What's going on, Matthew? What's going on, man? Just chilling. You started your Muay Thai journey in New York. Then you went to Thailand for the first time in 2008. Did you feel a little like Jean-Claude Van Damme in the movie Kickboxer? Oh, totally. He's one of the reasons why I actually got into it. Um, like, just watching that movie actually start was one of the things that, that made me want to come to Thailand. So it was definitely awesome. When you stepped foot on the land, you know, when you felt the sand, what was that feeling like? Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing to, to be in Thailand, to be in a place where a lot of my, my friends and family have never even thought about being or coming to, you know. So it's definitely outside of the realm of, of New Yorkers, especially. Not just the U.S. There's a lot of people that don't come from the U.S. out to Asia, really. But definitely from New York, a lot of people don't leave New York. So. It's awesome. Yeah, you traded the concrete jungle for the actual jungle. Yeah, yeah. Like when when I first moved here, it actually looked like a jungle. Like it was pretty scary. Um, crazy snakes out all the time. You know, there'd be cobras just on the road or in your bathtub, and then you gotta you gotta worry about that every morning. So back then, it used to be pretty dangerous. Now it's it's we're civilized here in Phuket. It's pretty civilized. What was the turning point for you that got you to fully dedicate yourself to Muay Thai and fight professionally? Um, well, training, for me, the training turning point was when I had seen myself um, in a photo and I couldn't recognize myself. Um, so I went to a christening and, I, and I, I asked my family, like, who's this guy? And it was me. And after that, I broke down and uh i quit my job quit everything and, and just started picking up muay thai and just started training muay thai but um for me to get into fighting fighting was a little bit different fighting i was forced into fighting um my trainers were just like you know you've been here long enough it's it's time you need to just go um and they put me in a in a small like little gym fight back in the day and it was it was against a muscled up Australian guy named Frank, Frank the Tank is what they called him. Um, and they, like the trainers saw that I was actually really good. And um, I was doing things that a big guy back then, you wouldn't see a, a, a fat guy, you know, throwing head kicks at people. Now I don't throw head kicks at all. But um, back then it was very surprising to them. And, and as much as I kicked and as much as I was aggressive and into it, they really liked it. And the next week after that, I had my first fight. And um, my first fight was, was another big one, man. Um, I was getting the shit low kicked out of me. Um, There's probably about 40 low kicks, 30 to 40 low kicks in that, in that one fight. And um, I manned up, I bit down on the mouth guard and I knocked the dude out. And after that, it was just all, this is all I want to do, you know? This after is taking all those leg kicks in your first fight. Was there some doubt in your mind? Like, hey, you know, this maybe is not for me. Oh, definitely not. Like, um, whenever, whenever I do something, I commit to it. Um, there's, there's never a doubt, really, in my mind. Oh, should I, should I be doing this? Should I not be doing this? No, you fucking, you push yourself to the end. And after it's all done, yeah, then you, then you, then you, then you figure out what, what path you want to go to. But um, definitely, no, I'm, I'm definitely, I was, I was always in that fight. There was never a time to count me out. So and that's the way I always take it. How did your family react to the news that you'll be moving to Southeast Asia and living the fighter lifestyle? Man, my family was pretty, they're pretty supportive of everything that I do, especially ever since I had quit my job and they, they realized, oh, this is real. You know, be before that, they were the ones that, that told me, you know, oh, Matthew, you're getting, you're getting fat. You know, you have to lose weight. You have to do this. You have to do that. And I didn't think about it too much. I was like, you know, I'm a growing boy. I'm getting strong, you know, and uh, not realizing 
thing. So after that whole session, after, after all the, those things that had happened, they were very supportive. My, my friends on the other side totally didn't realize that I was actually making the trip until the day that I was leaving. And that's when they were like, oh, shit, this is happening. You know, everyone else was pretty accepting of it. Yeah, you've been out there for many, many years now. Have your family and your friends visited you many times? Um, not too much. I've had, I've had friends uh, that have come to the area, um, but not many. I've probably, in, in total, I've probably had maybe four guys or, or five people from, from the States, from New York City um, that have come out here. Um, but it's all right. You know, it's, it, everything comes, you know, you have to sacrifice things to get what you want to get done, you know? Um, totally. This is, this is it for me. But, um, once I get this fight out the way, you know, um, I promised my mom for a very long time, I was going to take care of a vacation for her and even more than a vacation. If she really wants it, uh, I'll bring her out here to move. I haven't seen my mom in over five years, so it's pretty important for me to start taking care of her the way it should be you know no doubt you went back to thailand in 2010 now it's 2018 how much has phuket changed since then because right now if you go people only see that one road and they're like oh it's such a great place but i'm pretty sure in 2010 it wasn't like that oh for sure screw 2010 man 2000 Talking about 2007 when I first got here. Um, man, literally the whole road was a jungle. It was just, you know, it was a jungle. And, and if there wasn't jungle and there's open space, it was to like, they had coconut tree farms and, and they had uh, rubber tree farms, you know? There was, there was nothing really around. You had like one restaurant that was a little tin shack with, with four seats, you know, there was nothing here. Um, it's amazing how it's grown. Um, it's, it's sad at the same time. It's, it's awesome how Tiger Muay Thai has, has helped build up this place and, and all these other gyms have gotten involved as well to, to build up Phuket and, and Cholong itself. There's so much money coming into Cholong, I feel like, because of the fight industry. Um, but man, it it was before it was it was amazing. There was there was nature all around you. Now there's a lot less nature on the island. But it's still it's still cool. It's it's a different different vibes, but they're all they're all cool. They're all still gel. Since then you have had so many fights. Fighting in Thailand can be hectic, especially for a foreigner. What is one of the craziest <laughs> things you saw while fighting there? I'm I'm one of the the crazy one. Crazy shit happens to me in my fights. Um, uh, getting ridiculous cuts. Well, we've seen broken bones. My friends have broken arms. They've broken, you know, pretty regular. Like at least once a week, you'll jam. Um, it all happens. It's it's a regular occurrence. So we don't we don't get too too queasy about it anymore. You know. You signed a deal with one recently. What attracted you to this promotion? Yep. Yeah. Um, there are, sorry, my dog's hopping in here. This she wants to hop on camera. <laughs> um, uh, like, uh, it was, we're pretty, like, I, I like seeing, okay, Stella, you got to go. <laughs> you got to go, Stella. <laughs> um, I, I, I just have always been interested in one series. Um, I always thought it was a, a good one to get into. Uh, I've been coaching many, many fighters from around the world that have been a part of, of uh, the Super Series, not just the Super Series, but the regular one championship. Um, I've dealt with guys that are in glory, that are in UFC. And it's all, I, I really like, um, I really like what, what one is bringing to the table. You know, um, it's very down to earth. They like their fighter. They like to protect their fighters. Thank you, Sela. Um, yeah, they like to protect their fighters. They like to work with their fighters. They don't just like, don't do anything with them. They promote their fighters really well, I feel like. Um, 
So I believe it's a good place for me to get started on on a big show. You know, I've I've been a part of a couple other big promotions, but I, I really didn't find it as as my home. You know, it was very far away from from what I was from where I was. You know, um, going into Europe and and dealing with people in Europe and their mindsets are still very different from mine. Whereas I feel that out here in um, out here with one, it's a little bit better. You know, it, it's a little bit more for me. If things grow beyond that, um, so be it. But uh, I believe one FC is is a pretty good spot. I, I feel comfortable here. So, what do you want to achieve with this promotion? Um, you know, uh, like I I've been I've been behind the scenes for a very very long time. Um, you know, I, I help big people with their with their fight camps. You know, I, I've 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 been a part of training camps for the longest time. I've gone through through all these battles with other fighters. You know, um, my skills are there, and they've always been there. And people have always wondered, you know, why why am I not on the big shows? You know, while well, I see all all these other people, all these other guys that that have lesser amount of fights and and less less talent than me um, that are making it onto big shows. And it's one, you know, it's about their promotion skills mm -hmm. in the fight. Um, and it just wasn't my time, you know? And I, I feel now it's my time to, to, come, to come forward. I'm, I'm you know, I, I, I turned 30 and um, it's, we're at that point now. It's like, now it's time to show now it's time to show my strengths. You know, I've I've gotten a lot of the 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 child out of me. You know, that there's a lot of that that those younger elements that are in you for a very long time. And I believe I've gotten most of I've kicked most of them. You know, and um, I I believe I, it, this is now my time to focus on on becoming a champion. Yeah. Myanmar, how excited are you about making your promotional debut in that country? Because Right now, Myanmar is becoming a huge fight country. Actually, it has been a huge fight country for a long time, but now people are starting to notice, and the fandom is crazy down there. So how excited are you about going there and fighting? Oh, it's awesome. Um, I'm totally up for it. I'm totally stoked for it because, um, you know, um, I've I've been asked to fight Lithway so many times, so so many times, and you know, the money is definitely good. You know, we're we're there. We hunt for paychecks. We're prize fighters. We we hunt for that that bit that's at the end as well. It's not just going into the fight. And you know, compared to a lot of Muay Thai promotions, um, like we're we're beating the crap out of each other in a lot of Muay Thai promotions here in Thailand and, and we get paid peanuts. So um to be able to go to a place like Myanmar and, and throw down was always awesome to me and you can make some good money doing so. Um but like I've been training kickboxing for the last few years, you know, I've I've dedicated myself more towards kickboxing because of one, like making money, you know. And two, I, I don't have to get myself as injured, you know, um, no, wearing no gloves, wearing only gauze, um, throwing headbutts, throwing elbows, getting knocked, knocked out, knocked down, knocked out, and, and getting back up is, is uh, pretty intense. It's pretty dangerous. Um, and, I'm, you know, it sucks that I, I never got that opportunity. Who knows? I could still probably get that opportunity later on to – to uh fight Lithway. Um but even so just uh being able to have a Muay Thai fight against Elliot Compton who is a a cage Muay Thai champion with I'm um, fighting him with small gloves. It was like it was too perfect not to take this fight. You know, if I want to go into a battle against against another person that that's skillful and and is is very young still and and is growing the same as me um why wouldn't i want to fight in myanmar in these four ounce gloves in a cage against a warrior like that like that's that's awesome to me and just going into battle against another man that 
that is going to bring that force forward and, and we're going to be butting heads the entire time. Um, I really want to put on a great show for, for Myanmar. I think it would be really good to do there. I'd, I'd really like this place to be for my, my debut. I think it's an uh, awesome start. Speaking of your uh, opponent, Elliot Compton, he is from Australia. What are your mm -hmm. thoughts of his skill set? Um, he's, he's pretty good. Um, he brings the fight forward, like I said. Um, but, uh, like, they, he, he likes to, to throw some unorthodox attacks compared to what I do. You know, I'm, I'm very straightforward. I, I don't like, I don't make a lot of extra movements or anything when I'm fighting. Um, and he likes to, he likes to, man, he likes to throw a lot of spinning shit. He likes to spin. He likes to throw spinning elbows. He likes to throw spinning back fists. He likes to throw spinning kicks. Um, I'm ready for it. And I, I know he's going to bring the, he's going to bring, bring the pain, whatever. Like we'll, we'll meet there. We'll meet in that center of the ring. Let's see who's going to, who's going to be able to stand at the end of the fight. Elliot Compton, he was finished by Cosmo Alexandre a few months back in his mm -hmm. uh, one Super Series debut in Manila. What did you think of his performance up to the point that he was kneed in the midsection? Um, yeah, I think that he was a solid, he was, he was doing okay for himself. Um, he, took, he took Cosmo down with a, with a nice little sweep. Um, it was pretty solid. It, it didn't get to go very far. You didn't really get to see much action from him because of that, that nice body shot. And Cosmo is, is known for that nice knee to the body. Um, so yeah, it was, it was pretty, it, it, like, I, I can't really say anything about that, about that, uh, that L for him, you know, I believe he has a lot more to show. He didn't get to show a lot of the, his work that, that he was putting in, in the gym or whatever. So, um, but you know, let's, let's forget that one. The, this one is, is the one that we need to be worrying about. So. All right, speaking of the fight that you have coming up, June 29th, do you see, you said that you want to perform, you want to put on a good fight. Do you see a, a, a crazy back and forth battle happening or could it be one of those fights where one of you guys uh, lands a, a solid shot and someone can go out quickly? Um, being in small gloves, I, there's always that chance anyone's going to go out very quickly i I'd, I'd like it to be a back and forth battle i want to show my skills in there and if he'd like to show his skills fucking step up your game and we're, we're gonna meet in that in the middle of that ring which would be great you know i like i said i want to have you know me and me and elliot we had um as soon as i signed the contract i had sent him a message i sent him a message on instagram and i was like yo we're, we're lined up to fight um, his response to me was, word, let's go out there and, uh, give fight of the night. And I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to go out there and, and, and throw heavy hands and show everybody what stand up fighters can do, you know, in, in this whole world with small gloves, with, with being a part of a big organization like one FC, we could go out there and we could show our true talents and. I'm skilled. I know he's skilled. We're going to put, put these forces against each other and, and, and really have like that back and forth battle. That'd be awesome. Yeah, it's nice to see that you guys show respect to each other, but at the same time, you're ready to bring that violence and just put on a show, man. It's going to be, it's going to be a great, great fight. Um, June 29th in Myanmar, one championship spirit of a warrior. Matthew Semper will take on Elliot Compton. Thanks for your time, man. It was great talking to you. Thank you, man. It was awesome.